Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this guide for March 7th new form, I'll cover her best relics, light cones, team comp, rotations, pros and cons, and whether she's worth building. Sit back and relax, and if you find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Do you have a character or light cone in the game that you really want, but you don't have enough stellar jades? Fortunately, lootbar.gg allows you to buy stellar jades at a discounted rate for all regions. Lootbar is one of the fastest and most reliable recharging platform with attractive discount rates. For an example, I will buy the 1980 Stellar Jade package for $26.40, which otherwise would have cost me $29.99, saving me a total of 20%, and also new users get an additional 5% off. To purchase, simply enter your UID and region and to receive your package in less than 30 minutes. All recharges are done through the official channel with MiHoYo, which allows you to enjoy all top-up offers. Now you will be ready to get your favorite characters. Check the link in the description and pinned comment to get the amazing discounts. I won't delve into her abilities since I assume everyone knows how she works. For an overview, March has the imaginary element and follows the path of Hunt. March can be played with either a crit or break build. With a crit playstyle, you want to match your main DPS's weakness, according to the enemy boss, and they require a ton of attacks. For Eidolons, we will only be getting an E3 for this patch, but she's strong enough even at E3. Building March 7th. Make sure not to go for a hybrid build, as it will reduce her DPS significantly. For the body, prioritize crit rate unless you have crit rate light cones, in which you have go for crit damage instead. For break builds, go for a crit rate body to optimize March 7th's inherent high crit damage multipliers. Boots for break teams or solo DPS, go for speed boots. For full crit teams, attack boots or speed wouldn't really matter. The one with better substats will come out on top, though 134 speed with attack boots is easier to build and offers slightly higher DPS. I'll just be going over the full break build first for March. Aim for a total of 156 or 160 speed, then prioritize as much break effect as possible. Attack percent and crit damage should only be considered as spare stats. I won't cover break relics DPS calculations as they depend on the units in your team. New relic sets are better with fire weaknesses due to extra speed and higher break effect. Older relic sets are a safer option when enemies lack fire weakness. Keep in mind with future break supports and DPS units like Faciao, Marches has diminished appeal for break builds. For crit builds, 134 speed or 160 speed is ideal depending on attack or speed boots. After that ensure you have at least a minimum of 65% crit rate, ideally 70%. And focus equally on both crit damage and attack percent. March scales very well with attack percent, which can't be saturated. Even if you have maxed out attack stats with attack percent main stat on the orb and boots together with Robin, the one with one roll higher will come out on top. Players should focus on getting more crit damage if possible, as you don't want more attack percent rolls over crit damage rolls still. Relic set, you can choose any of the listed sets. Personally, I would pick either Musketeer or Imaginary set if players don't have any good set pieces already, as you will have an easier time reaching 134 speed or 70% crit rate with the free stats. Other relics are totally fine if you have good substats, since you don't want to waste your fuel on perfect relics just for a 5% DPS boost. Planar Ornament Rope Prioritize Attack Percent Orb Imaginary or Attack Percent These are all the light cone DPS difference, as you can see there's barely any difference. So players should pick the one with the better substats. March has a ton of planar sets that she can use. Players should farm for Rolitant Arena due to the 8% crit rate if they don't have a fully built relic set available yet. Izumo is very decent due to that 12% crit rate, but you're restricted to hunt units. There's potential synergy with future hunt units coming out too. Support sets only if you have triple S tier substats and if you don't want to waste your fuel anymore, as I wouldn't bother slapping it on due to only 2% plus DPS increase, which is literally nothing. Moving on to her light cones. She has a ton of options, which is a great thing, especially for a free unit. Four break March crit rate light cones are preferred since there aren't any other F2P light cones that can increase break effect. This is one reason why I personally don't like break effect March. Last place light cones due to restrictions. River is only if you're running a venture in as that speed bonus is insanely good, but it does have the lowest DPS output out of all the light cones. Silence is also pretty trash as this light cone would be useless if there are more than two units on the field. 
Sleep Like the Dead is the better option overall as no matter the scenario, it will give you consistent DPS output. At second place, Subscribe S5 is consistent but it falls off to sword play at max output as you won't ever keep your ultimate due to March E6 and her playstyle. Stellar C is insanely good with that 16% crit rate but two major downsides is that you need March to deal the final blow for that 40% attack bonus for way higher DPS outputs where if your secondary DPS unit steals the kill. You can say goodbye to that 40% attack bonus or if you're facing single enemy boss scenarios. Final Victor is insanely good if you have a minimum of 70% crit rate as if you aren't critting this light cone will have performance issues, but if you do this light cone is almost on par with both swordplay and subscribe for more. Swordplay has the highest DPS output even beating over some of the signature light cones. Even with 3 stacks before her enhanced attack the DPS is already equal to subscribe, not to mention that her enhanced attack has 8 hits. Meaning this light cone won't underperform even if you're switching targets. Topaz, Ratio, and Seal's Light Cone are all at first place due to them having no real conditions where they can perform at a near or 100% uptime. Reason why I'm not putting Swordplay or Subscribe at first place is because they doesn't come with any crit rate stats. For Seal's Light Cone going for 134 speed or 160 speed doesn't really matter. 134 speed does have higher DPS output compared to 160 speed still. Though I'm unsure if two copies Topaz Light Cone could stack. Here are the DPS calculations for the light cones. Overall in priority sword play, subscribe, final victor and stellar C at the last option. If you don't have any the signature light cones avail. Do not pull for signature light cones just for March. It's not a smart move as the DPS gap will never be more than 15%. Pulling for a new unit will always have better returns. For her team comp and rotations. She has a ton of team comps that she can be put in. Please do not run her with Dr. Ratio as it's trash. If you have Silver Wolf, then going for a full mono imaginary is fine, but the DPS output for this team comp isn't really that high. Instead you can play her with Jing Lu at 135 speed and Bronya at 134 speed. Jing Lu works the best due to the amount of attacks she can do. You can also replace Jing Lu with any DPS unit like Blade which is able to do a ton of attacks, but they must have at least S tier DPS output. This setup is best if the enemy boss has the same weakness as your core DPS unit. Second best crit team would be an FUA team with Topaz and Aventurin plus Robin. It works well due to the amount of times Topaz can attack. Great if you're facing Fire Week. At first place March performs way better with Yunli as she solves the AOE issue, and this is Yunli's best team setup too being slightly better compared to Tingyun. Yunli is also able to taunt and has the highest DPS compared to any of the other units. There won't be any lack of attacks too. Just one issue is that if you're facing bosses that don't attack frequently, or if enemy bosses don't have physical weak this team may lose to Topaz setup instead. Another one team comp that works insanely well. Potentially even do zero cycle clears. Would be crit solo hyper carry march. Bronya would only be focusing her skill on Galgar with an EER rope. This way Gallagher is able to do 5 attacks, with Robin and Dance S5 on Bronya it could be up to 8 attacks in one cycle. Bronya's ultimate buff also scales insanely well with March 2. If you don't have Dance S5 this team still works, but performs quite a lot poorly, but you're still guaranteed a max of 5 cycle clears for MOC. For break teams, you can run the standard hyper carry break setup. Even better if the enemy has fire weak. Appoint Shurfu to Galgare at all times. Unless enemies are ice weak, then using it on Wan Mei is fine. With Firefly, you would want to replace Wan Mei. Shurfu on Galgare is way better. If your Firefly has 164 speed, but it's near impossible to hit that speed breakpoint on Firefly without the 10% speed buff. If Firefly has 154 speed, using it on Firefly can get her an extra turn during her ultimate state, but you can also use it on Gallagher for more DPS output instead. March 7th Hunt Pros and Cons Pros. DPS wise S tier. Just a quick note her DPS is on par with Dr. Ratio. But she does have flexibility where Dr. Ratio does not. Putting her on the low double S tier ranking for certain teams. It feels good to build March when her enhanced basic attack is like Seal's ultimate DPS. She's account friendly. As she can be a replacement for quite a few units. Good for MOC. Good replacement for a few units that players do not have. Does not need to farm her best in slot relics. Skill point positive. Has a ton of good light cone options. Has potential with future units. Cons. Isn't meta.
needs certain units like Robin to work well. Single target, which means she sucks at pure fiction. Limited 5-star units are still better than her. Not be a need but want for older players. Should you build March? If you don't have units that need her, no. If you like her design, yes. Overall rating. I would rate her a 7 out of 10 due to her flexibility for your account. But she's just a replacement for new players that join the game late where they aren't able to get DR ratio for free anymore. Or if they don't have Ruan Mei for Firefly. But players shouldn't forget that we will be getting a new break support and sustain soon. But if you need her, I don't see a reason to not build her. For players who have most units, already adding her to your roster has zero value. Do let me know your thoughts down below about March's seventh new form and if you're building her. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps out a ton. And that's it for this guide.